So here we are finally, finally talking about the Shadow Catcher Pass. And I already made a tutorial on this, like how to use the new Shadow Catcher Pass, but this is a different one. And how different is this? Well, if you take a look, right, if I make some changes to my Shadow Catcher Pass, you can see that it is getting updated and it is also maintaining transparency. <laughs> Sorry about that. But yeah, that is the big thing about this tutorial. Like a lot of you wanted to know how would I like mess around with the shadow catcher pass and then merge it back to my original image while maintaining the transparency. And I thought, you know, why would you need to do that? You have a background, just multiply it with that. And then yeah, you are good to go. But apparently you guys wanted to know that and it got me curious as well. So yeah. This, there is a way out there and this is, yeah, this is exactly how you do that. So let's find out how to do that. And I accidentally, I deleted everything. I should not have done that. So let me just quickly add a re render layers node and a composite. So if I could type, my mic is getting in the way. So I really can't see uh, what is going on, but yeah. So here we are and I could have it control Z. That's just me being me, but either way this, is the tutorial so let's move on with the tutorial so first of all let me just quickly show you what the scene is so it got two beautiful lights a plane which has the shadow catcher enabled in the visibility object data properties a camera you don't really give a shit about but here is a free model that i modeled no a free model that i got which is actually intersecting but i don't give a shit about that too so uh, then let's go to the passes, enable shadow catcher, and in the render settings, make sure under film you have transparent enabled. Make sure you do that, okay? And now, basically, all you need to do is hit render. That was a weird noise. I'll ignore that. Clearly, no ghost in my house, hopefully. Yeah, no ghost. They really scare me. All right, so <laughs> that is done. The render is done. That was pretty fast. Not a complex scene. And now we are back where we started. So let's take a look at the shadow catcher pass itself. And this is how it is. So it is a grayscale image, so a black and white image. And originally what I told is, hey, let's add a mix node and then set the blend mode to multiply and then change, just change the color or you can plug in the background image that you have. So it could be anything and you are good to go. Then all you need to do is again, add a alpha over node like this connect the shadow catcher like everything you did with the shadow catcher at the end of it connect that to the top socket which is the foreground sorry which is the background and then connect the origin or the image that you want to be on the foreground when in, in in this case it's this head i don't even know what the name of the guy is but he has head so i'll use that that came out wrong but yeah uh, this is how it will look but again no transparency uh, so basically you can't just you know manipulate the shadow catcher pass recompile it with the original image and then export it out and just do whatever kinky stuff you want to do with it so you can't do that so you basically have to stay in blender so how would you bring transparency so let's take a look at how you would do that so i'll just control x to do that so i'll maintain the connection or actually i'll just remove the connection as well here as well anyway so shadow gadget pass this is how it was it would look and yeah let's take a look at what we want to achieve and basically what we want to achieve is that wherever there is white it should be transparent and wherever there is black meaning wherever there is shadow let it be there so that's exactly what we need to tell blender so once again wherever there is white make it transparent the rest keep it as it is how would you go about doing that well uh, many there may be a lot of ways out there right but this is the one I came up with or this is the one I found out and all you need is a alpha over node and a quick quick intro to the node is I'll just change this color to black so when the factor is set to 1 this image will be shown which is the foreground and whenever the factor is 0 this image the one above the white one so this image this socket right <laughs> I'm too being I'm being too specific you guys are not dumb so yeah when the factor is set to 0 black will be shown or basically any any color there is will be shown and whenever the factor is set to one uh the image over here the color over here will be shown and it can be any color uh, you guys are not dumb but i'll just switch this to black and i'll just switch this to white there we go so how exactly is this node going to help us well 
If you take a look at the shadow gadget pass, right, uh, it is a grayscale image, meaning we can use this image as a factor. And here we have a factor. So now if I connect that over here, connect the shadow gadget pass to the factor, and if I view the alpha over node, nothing has changed. And you, yeah, it, it's exactly right, right? Nothing has changed because all the white values, right, over here, they have a value of one. So basically in 3D, uh, yeah, whenever there is white, the software assumes the value to be one, right? So and the black means zero and anything in gray is like 0.5 or something like that but yeah anyway so all the white values are getting this value so the foreground one because remember one means this zero means this and all the black values all the darker values are getting the values or the color over here so simple as that nothing has changed so here is when things get interesting so if i click over here and as you can see there is a alpha option over here so which you you don't get that in the mix notes if i had a mix node Oh, actually you do get it <laughs> jesus <laughs> we could do this with a mix node actually so yeah we'll check it we'll check it later on i guess which node was it that didn't give me the option of alpha i, I don't know but anyway uh white yeah so black over here if i take down the alpha you'll notice something has changed over here and now if you take a look there is transparency going on over here and now i know what you're thinking you're like hey that's that's the tutorial so you know what let me just turn the back the alpha over here uh bring the alpha down over here and <laughs> it didn't work i know it should like logically when i first thought about this it should have worked like it should work but i don't know for some reason it just doesn't and i'm not going to pretend i understand what is going on over here but basically you can't do that so when it has when it's white the alpha must be one right so basically we just need to work with what we have meaning which is that you know the black can have an alpha so it can be transparent right and now really uh it's it's kind of easy to work with over here you know and basically what we need to do is just invert what is going on over here so currently the black values are getting their transparency and the white isn't so if we add an invert node which exists in blender's compositor it should invert that so let's give it a shot so let's add in the invert node let's put that in and <laughs> yeah uh it is something so it did invert it but yeah and the and if you take a look the transparency is there some sort of but again we want this area right to be transparent like completely transparent and if you take a look over here in the invert node there is an option called alpha so if we click that boom so yeah one step closer to what we want to achieve and that is that the color of the shadow is now white yeah because since it flipped it it also flipped the colors i suppose or it just didn't carry over the original color which is what i think is going on over here and why is that well if you take a look over here you'll notice that the value of the color is zero so basically it has no color it's 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 black right but if i increase the value to one take a look at that and this is mission accomplished so yeah now you have the shadow catcher back to its original form the way you saw it in the viewport and it's there and now if i plug this over here in this alpha word node and if i view it there you go you have your original image merged again with the shadow capture pass and it has transparency and you can manipulate it so uh when it comes to manipulation sorry i don't know why that that happened i guess i clicked somewhere again but yeah when it comes to manipulation you know you can't do it after like after all the kinky stuff that we just did you can't do it so if you Take a look nothing is happening so yeah you can't really do it here but what you can do is do it before we do all the kinky stuff right so as you can see it is working just 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 fine so you can add a color ramp and if you want the shadow to be a bit you know faint as you can see it is working just fine at the end of the day the limitations are said by you so yeah feel free to do <laughs> go crazy out there but yeah basically this this is the tutorial but wait it's not over yet there is one more thing that i would like to discuss with, discuss with you guys and that is colors and what i mean by that is 
uh, I'll just create another scene over here, right? Single rep, or I'll just call it color for some reason, right? And now if I add a color to my light, so if I just render this out, and if I add something like purple or something like that, or pink, uh, in this case might as well. And now if I just render it out, which should be pretty fast, but because this light has color now, it will take a tad bit more time. And I think it's gonna, yeah, seven seconds. That's more than fine by me. All right, so now, uh, if you take a look at the shadow catcher, right, you'll see that we have a tiny bit of grid. And yes, I did my research and, you know, I asked myself on uh, in Google, I asked Google because I don't trust myself. So I asked Google, hey, do shadows have colors? So many of them said, like, a lot of people said, no, shadows don't have color because the reason why there is shadow is because there is no light. So shadow is the absence of light. But some said that, hey, when the, the light has a color, right, then the shadow kind of has the opposite of color. So if it's purple over here, so we are getting green. So that kind of does make sense. So here, uh, after doing everything we just did, if we take a look at the result, you'll notice that we still get a black shadow. So for those of you who want to have color on your shadows, what you would do is over here. So uh, this is exactly where the shadow is manipulated. So, you know, if I take down the alpha, nut, this is exactly what is controlling the shadow. And here we have the hue and saturation. So you can add color over here. So you just need to find your hue. So just increase the saturation by it. And then if you want, you can go, you know, green or whatever color you want it to be. And it is really up to you so this decision of uh having color on your shadows if you want to do that this is how you would achieve it and i would recommend to keep the saturation a tad bit low if you increase it as you can see it just goes bonkers yeah you don't want that so uh again here uh if as you can see the hue is set to pink uh but because we are you know the inversion is going on and if you take a look over here we are getting green over here so yeah uh when it comes to that uh, just go for what the color of the light is and you would automatically get the original color of what the shadow was in the shadow catcher so something like this over here it's green and this is <laughs> not the exact green again you need to mess with the saturation a bit or something like that again uh, you need to spend some time with it that's that's all i would say but yeah so for those of you who want to have color on your shadows uh, this is how you would do that and now yeah, so I'll just go back to my scene. There we go, original scene, yeah. And that is it. Actually, I am getting OCDs because the render is on. Oh, it's not, okay, OCDs are gone. Thank you so much, OCDs. But yeah, so other than that, I would say the tutorial is over. So yeah, that that this is it. This is how you would manipulate the shadow and recompile it with the original image or whatever you want to have it on the foreground while maintaining the transparency. So uh, quick disclaimer, uh, a lot of you guys asked me on Discord. So yeah, the, the, I take stuff more way seriously when, uh, when it's talked in Discord. I don't know, it's just I'm more active there, right? And yeah, so for those of you guys who want to be a part of that community the link is in the description feel free to join uh it's really fun i've met some really cool people there so i think it's a good opportunity to you know hang out there you talk about it you can ask for tutorials and i made this so actually someone requested hey how do you do that can you make a tutorial and here it is <laughs> they, they, they kind of forced me to look into this issue and again uh i'm pretty sure there is also another way as in 3d you know you can't only do a thing in just one way there has to be a lot lot more ways to achieve this but this is just what i ended up doing with and yeah uh, like we talked like we saw the mix node also has the alpha factor so maybe you can do this with the mix node uh i don't know but yeah this is how i did it and i really hope this helps you in your future projects or basically this just helps you solve all the problems anyway the video is going on uh for too long so yeah that is it i really hope you learned something new today and I'll catch you in the next one. So until then, be infinite.